Okay, this is the Dove Lady, and look here. This is a book. It'll soon be coming out. Right now, we haven't done the final draft. This is a uh, something they give you ahead of time. We can still make changes, but look at my name there. Elizabeth Eagle and Grace Butler. It's called Living Light Illuminated, and I will soon be saying, you can buy one from me <laughs> if you want. So, some of my orb pictures are in this book. Now, I'm going to make another one, though. Uh, that's going to be all orb pictures of the most beautiful orbs, which I will show you some today. I'm going to read you something, too, from uh, Walt, from not Walter Russell, from Norma Malanovich's book called the, the Light Shall Set You Free. And it's about motion. It's about uh, energy. But first, I want to put a plug in for my friend, John Paul Elliott. Now, there he is. Biggest life. He is all about shaking. He calls it the dogma. Because, you know, dogs shake. And... He doesn't have enough viewers, I think. I think his, his channel needs more subscribers. So if you wanted to go look him up under his name, that's the name of his channel. You'll see him shake. Look, he took his shirt off there. And to show you how his muscles and, well, not his muscles, how, how the flab on you shakes and how you stiffen up that flab. And if you're old and you got a lot of wrinkles and flabby skin, he shows you there how it will, it will tighten up that flab. And he's a real good man. He talks a lot of spiritual things, too. And, and so I wanted to give a shout-out to him and tell you about his channel. Now, I'm going to read to you. And I've got it all lined up here. Also, while I'm reading, I'm going to mostly... You don't really want to see the words... I don't think you do, but if you do, I have this book as a as a uh, PF. I can't think as a as a file in my Google Drive PDF file. That's the name of it, and I can send it to you. This book is out of print now, but it's a really good one. But I'm going to get these moving, and I'll read you about the nine bodies. And this has to do with John Paul because he talks about um, movement, motion, motion of our physical body. But everything in our world is because of motion. And I, I think you might find this interesting about vibration. And I'll tell you about the nine bodies that Norma explains so well here. Let me get this going. The first body is the physical body. It is the most dense of all, the nine bodies, and resides in the third dimensional frequency of the earth plane. It is considered to be the body temple and is the vehicle that transports the soul and all eight higher bodies. It is created out of the thoughts, feelings, words, and actions of the individual who governs it. This body must learn discernment before it can connect to the higher electron frequencies in the auric field. The second body is the emotional body. This body includes all intricate system of energy fields that produce vibrational frequencies that affect both the mental and the physical bodies. It is the source of power that moves the electro force when one is in alignment with the higher self. This body must learn discipline and independence and detach from all that it is not a part all that is not a part of the perfected plan before it can unite with the higher frequencies that surround it. The third body is the mental body. This body receives the thought processes of the universal mind and processes the information through a filtering system which is located in the pineal gland of the brain. The mental body and mind are not the same. The mental body is the resonance field within the auric shield that collects the data and transfers them for use to other systems within the other eight bodies. 
Mind energy is the God force that surrounds the mental body. The highest form of communication that can be transmitted to the mental body comes in the forms of symbols. The highest symbols the mental body must integrate into its essence before it can unite with the higher frequencies surround it are truth and service to other service to others and truth that that helps it to get with those higher some higher frequencies and we want our frequencies always to get higher now the fourth body is called the casual body this electromagnetic field comprises a source of power that wraps itself around the lower three bodies for the purpose of shielding the lower bodies from harmful forces that exist on the astral plane. It is the veil, so to speak, and yet serves as a filter for higher thought forms that come through to enlighten the individual on the spiritual path. The casual body is the connecting link to the oversoul. It contains the power to merge the vibrational frequencies of the lower three bodies into a higher vibration, thus producing the foundation for the successful merging of the twin flame within that must be united before ascension can be realized. An understanding and commitment to one's greater mission in life must be absorbed into this body before the individual can advance on the spiritual path. The fifth body is the higher mental body. This body guides the symbolism and force of the higher self to and through the lower bodies and states of consciousness. It is the part of the mental body that is connected to the heart of the Christos and that which directs life to evolve to higher states of existence. The higher mental body receives its messages from the higher self through a series of impulses sent down from the seventh dimension. One's ability to receive clear messages through the higher mental self, no, through the higher mental body, is determined by the degree to which the casual body has absorbed the lower discordant frequencies of the three bodies that exist below it. When all is in alignment, messages flow clearly, and the individual proceeds to fulfill God's will before the will of the ego. Obedience and courage to a higher purpose in life are the keys to master within this body before one can advance further. The sixth body is called the directional force body. The body directs or guides one's mission on earth. The directional force body receives the flow of electrons from the higher self and deflects or transforms these signals in such a way that the lower bodies can interpret them. This body is connected to the higher thought forms of the universe and is more closely aligned with the individuals who reside on higher levels of spiritual mastery. This is also the body through which the ascended masters communicate from the etheric through the seventh level of the God plane. Silence and devotion must be learned before this body aligns with the lower five detailed above. The seventh body is that of the higher self. This is the body that works to assure that all alignments of the lower bodies are complete, even though, even through the physical plane. The higher self contains the individual's light body and constitutes the oneness connection to the all. Some believe this body is synonymous with the level upon which the Ascended Masters reside, but may fall short in this understanding. The higher self is likened to the vehicle that can be used to transport the soul through the gateway to the dimensions where the Ascended Masters reside. It is the perfected body of the Christos, which awaits to take the individual home to the Father's mansion of many rooms. Before one can integrate the higher self into the lower six bodies, service to humanity must be complete, and one's legacy must be left on earth. 
In other words, one must be complete with his or her mission. The eighth body is called the energy vortex body. This body wraps itself around the lower seven bodies and keeps the individual connected to the planes of consciousness that provide higher guidance. It is a level of beingness that is beyond direct communication to the lower seven bodies. It is the body that is aligned with the guardian angels who so lovingly... uh Uh-oh, here's a picture of me. Popped up. I thought you might want to see what I look like. (laughs) I took this recently. And I had my makeup on that day, so I didn't look quite so bad. But anyway, let me get on with reading this about the eighth body. I'll start over. The eighth body is called the energy vortex body. This body wraps itself around the lower seven bodies and keeps the individual connected to the planes of consciousness that provide higher guidance. It is a level of beingness that is beyond direct communication to the lower seven bodies. It is the body that is aligned with the guardian angels who so lovingly guide individuals on their paths. The energy vortex body constitutes the passageway for ascension as it is the link between the higher self and the great central sun. For this body to merge with the lower seven bodies, light must permeate one's consciousness to such a degree that the third eye remains fully illumined at all times. The ninth body is called the electron body. This body vibrates to the same degree as the etheric. This body has the power totally no this body has the power to, to totally transform the lower eight bodies into light and perform the ascension process. The electron body provides the ultimate experience for the soul which has toiled for so many lifetimes to reach Shambhala, the home of the Ascended Masters. This body holds the prayers of the faithful and is the reason why you have come to earth. It is the ultimate. It is the all. Now, following that transmission, a question was asked of Katumi to explain if the process of bringing the nine bodies into alignment is what we call transformation. His reply was as follows. Yes and no. Transformation implies that the electronic frequency of an individual is altered. Total transformation includes altering one's consciousness as well. Humans can undergo physical, mental, and emotional changes, which can cause transformational changes. But if their consciousness is not changed with spirit, then the transformation is incomplete. Ultimate transformation includes an understanding of the integration of universal laws on the road to spiritual mastery. In this understanding, transformation is complete, for this change of consciousness accelerates one's ascension into the ninth body or pure light body. When one ascends, all lower eight bodies are shed and transformation is complete. One cannot reach this state of enlightenment until all nine bodies are aligned in the heart of the Christos energy, and the consciousness of the individual is God-realized. The subject of transformation is very important, for it is the topic that will consume the hearts of the masses for the next two decades to come. The concept of transformation is perceived on many levels, The first level concerns what is observed in the third dimension. Here, anyone can see and detect with the senses any pattern of change. Changes are measurable and can be recorded in historical documents. They can also be permanent changes. The second kind of transformation occurs on the emotional level. Here, one experiences events that change his or her vibrational frequencies to either a higher or lower state. This is the state of mind which can and does affect not only the individual who is undergoing the change, but also those who are affected by the change. This kind of change is recorded in the Akashic Records as lessons 
learned and is directly associated with the karmic paths of humans. The third kind of transformation, and that with which this document is directly concerned, is on a, of a spiritual kind. Here, transformation includes changes on a molecular level. When the enlightened Christ presence is being absorbed into the lower bodies of the individual. This form of transformation not only affects consciousness, but also affects the physical, emotional, and mental bodies. This state of being is likened to the harp in the ethers playing a beautiful harmonic melody. The enlightened being ascends into a frequency of love and light that sounds like the music the harp plays, and the ethers support this transition process. I want to show you in this picture coming up. See that little star thing right there? It kept being in all the pictures afterwards. I thought that was kind of special. You'll see it in about three or four of these pictures that go by. I've zoomed in so close you don't see the outer edges of the uh, orb. But uh, this little star-like thing, a little yellow star, I noticed in a lot of the pictures here. Now to get on. The third kind of transformation, and that with which this document is directly concerned, is of a spiritual kind. Here transformation includes changes on a molecular level when the enlightened Christ presence is being absorbed into the lower bodies of the individual. This form of transformation not only affects consciousness, but also affects the physical, emotional, and mental bodies. This state of being is likened to the harp in the ethers playing a beautiful harmonic melody. Melody, The enlightened being ascends into a frequency of love and light that sounds like the music the harp plays, and the ethers support this transition process. And I realize I read that twice. Okay. What is unknown to many today is that this state of beingness is within reach of all who choose this state of existence. It is the heaven on earth that was promised to the children of Abraham eons ago. So many of the children, however, are still in darkness and cannot see that heaven is truly right before their eyes. They must learn to accelerate their frequencies and become light. And soon they will remember that the only way to do this is through an understanding of the chakras. Now, I'm going to read this other. It's called the core star level. The deepest dimension of our existence is the core star, our divine essence. Renan, 1993, describes this level as a beautiful star located one and one half inches above the navel on the center line of the body. This is our essential nature our individualistic reflection of the Divine Creator. It is the source of our perfection, our goodness, our wisdom, and our love. It is the source of our creative energies. The core star is the source of our manifestation of the perfection of the Creator. While we may not be able to access and manifest this perfection, it remains within each of us. Spiritual enlightenment or growth is a vehicle that allows us to move toward that perfection. The wonder of our creation and the complexity of our existence is seen in the four dimensions of our energy systems. The perfection of the creation of our physical lives is supported on many non-physical levels. Each of us receives energy and powers from these dimensions, but we can increase our options and abilities to access them in even more powerful ways. The road to spiritual enlightenment is part of our life's task, as well as our means of living in more successful, productive ways. The fifth dimension. How much longer will you go on letting your energy sleep? How much longer are you going to stay oblivious to the immensity of yourself? Don't lose time in conflict. Lose no time in doubt. Time can never be recovered, and if you miss an opportunity, it may take many lives before another comes your way again. 
And that was a saying by Sher Rajani in A Cup of Tea. Throughout their many transmissions, the Ascended Masters continually refer to the fifth dimension. They state that we are moving from the third through the fourth and into the fifth dimension as the earth moves with the procession of the equinoxes out of the age of Pisces and into the age of Aquarius. They also say that the world will change in a twinkling of an eye and that some of us will change with it. What does it mean that the earth is entering the fifth dimension? What is the fifth dimension? How will the world change? If and when it does, will we be changed? In order to understand the answer to these questions, one must first acquire an understanding of the world from a different perspective. To comprehend the fifth dimension, one must first understand that everything in the universe is energy and can be measured and reduced to vibrational frequencies, the number of vibrations per second emitted by an object or experience. The term includes The term everything includes mental, emotional, physical, and even spiritual things. Every particle, thought, word, object, experience, or emotion has its own vibrational frequency, and that vibration can be measured mathematically. We exist in the third dimension, although there are other dimensions of time-space as well, such as the fourth and fifth, which will be discussed later. Each dimension in the universe contains seven levels or major vibrational frequencies, and these seven levels constitute a curriculum for that dimension. When the soul chooses to live in a dimension, it must master the curriculum of that dimension before it is allowed to exit that reality and evolve. For example, the curriculum for the third dimension is love and light. The way this is accomplished is by studying the white light and its seven colors, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet, and understanding that light is the source of all creation and power. Since light comprises the energy field in which we live, and we are not separate from this energy field, then the light is within us. Since the human body is an energy system, microcosm, containing all aspects of the universe, macrocosm, these same seven colors are found within us in the forms of our chakras, and each chakra represents one of the seven colors contained in white light. This was discussed in the previous chapter. It is also known that each color has a psychological and emotional agenda. Red stands for our physical needs and our ability to ground ourselves. Orange governs our relationship and sexuality. Green aids in healing and giving love. To attain mastery, we eventually must control our emotional and mental bodies and achieve command over the agendas associated with the chakras. Physicists can measure the vibration of these seven colors and have discovered that that they each vibrate to distinct frequencies related to the seven major notes on the musical scale. Thus the frequency, number of vibrations per second, at which a note vibrates, can be translated into a color. Red vibrates at the lower end of the spectrum, and violet at the higher end. Each of the seven levels within a dimension has a vibrational range unique to that level, and each of these individual levels can be subdivided further into seven divisions. Lower dimensions vibrate at lower frequencies. Higher dimensions vibrate at higher frequencies. All dimensions comprise consciousness, and they all exist simultaneously. Right now on the screen you're seeing Harry. (laughs) I don't know what Harry is except I call him a light being. He's always showing up in pictures that I take with one certain camera. And he looks like a little spider and a hairy little spider, so I call him Harry. Okay, enough about Harry. 
The Ascended Masters vibrate at a level much higher than we do. Although we exist simultaneously with them, most of us cannot see them even though they can see us. Those who can see them can see them only with the inner eye called the third eye. Another example of something that vibrates at a higher frequency is ultraviolet light, which resides on the border between the third and fourth dimensions. With instrumentation, we can measure this higher frequency and therefore know that it exists, even even though we cannot see it with our naked eyes. This light always has been a part of our reality, yet we did not know this until we developed the technology to measure it. The second concept that is important to understand is that all dimensions within the universe exist simultaneously. All that is or ever will be exist now in this moment of time. However, we are limited by our consciousness as to how much of this existence we can perceive and comprehend. The higher our consciousness, the higher our vibration rate, the more we can see into other dimensions. While the above statement is true, it is also difficult for most people to understand. In the past, only minds like Einstein could comprehend exactly what simultaneous existence means. Today, with our scientific discoveries and increasing technological information, humanity slowly is acquiring the capability to understand these advanced concepts. Now, this is all I'm going to read you out of um, out of this book, The Light Shall Set You Free, but I do have a reading list for it because I read it. I read it on my YouTube channel, and I'm going to now just not go so slow on showing you these pictures. And I'll concentrate on them of the orbs. I'm getting so many colors in the orbs. It just fascinates me. Constantly fascinates me. So, Harry again. <laughs> I like that little character. When I don't see Harry, I can say, Harry, I miss you. I'd like to see you. And he pops up in about a minute, usually. There's Harry. Now, some people might would be afraid of this light, or a little creature like Harry, they might think it's something bad. I don't think the light is going to show us bad things. I think the light is our friend. And the colors, I just, I think they're so beautiful. One day I'm going to have an art gallery with great big blown up pictures of these uh, orbs and all their colors because I think that color is a healing thing to look at color. They say that the seagulls, they before they go to rest for the night, they will 